Hey guys, how's it going? Okay, so in this video, we're back to the fundamentals of gaming. This video is gonna be about traction versus comfort. What's the difference and why do you need this? All right, so I'm gonna give you guys a couple examples. So firstly, let's say that you approach, like maybe saying like a homely girl, or maybe an overweight a chick, some girl doesn't take care of herself, you approach her, or you approach her very confidently, like, hey, how's it going? I think you're cute, I wanna to talk to you. What do you think's gonna happen when you approach a fat chick this way? What goes through her head? When you approach her, and you come up to her really confidently, the first thing she thinks is, is that you're out of her league. You approach her, she's like, oh no, this guy is more attractive than me, he's cooler, he's probably really good with girls, he's probably going to do this to tease me, or take, or like, uh, you know, maybe he's doing this to make his friends laugh or something like that, so you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna reject him before he can reject me. And then when my friends come around, I'm gonna tell them about how I rejected this super cool guy that approached me. Now, let's say you approach a girl and she's very attractive, or let's say that she's very confident. Let's say she's very confident, she takes care of herself. She's probably around a lot of cool ass guys. You approach her and you're like, hey, I think you're cute. I wanna to talk to you. What do you do for a living? Like, you're like this, it's, now the problem with these kind of approaches is that you're too comfortable, you're boring. She has a lot of people who are trying to get at her all the time, trying to get something from her, approaching her all fucking day long. And she has a really good intuition for shit. And she wants the cream of the crop, she wants the best out there. This kind of approach will not work for a 10 out of 10 type of girl. So in the first one, you're missing out from comfort. And the second, you're missing out on attraction. Now in this video, I'm gonna teach you what those actually are, how you guys can have these in your game, and what do you have to do technically to actually express this and learn how to use this properly. With that being said, let's get into the video. Any set you guys approach, you're gonna need both attraction and comfort. A lot of girls you approach will have either or in abundance and then you need to work the other or the opposite. So you approach like maybe you think as an attractive girl but she has low self-esteem, you need more comfort. If you approach a girl and she has high self-esteem, you need more attraction. You need to kind of play the girl wherever she's at. Now, here's the thing, you need both in excess. You can have as much as you want of either. You can have like, like tons, you can have an infinite amount of attraction, infinite amount of comfort. Now, here's the thing though, if you overplay it and you do one way too much, you're gonna lose the girl. When you hit with too much comfort, you lose the girl because she gets bored. You hit a girl with too much attraction, she ends up feeling that you must be teasing her and you're gonna reject her and this is all you're just making fun of her. So it's a balancing act. So you want to play this at the girl's level. You wanna play the girl and help her out with her insecurities. Now what are two archetypes that played both these characters really fucking well. Comfort would be the provider type guy, the rich guy, the guy who takes, <laughs> the guy's super responsible, who is very much in societal's parameters. He fits the bill for what any girl would wanna marry or thinks that she wants to marry, like what TV shows tell her that she wants to marry. Now, the other type guy, the guy who's attractive, is a player, the rock star type guy, the guy who just fucks a lot of girls and is tough to get into a relationship. Now, generally speaking, the same thing as when you're approaching a girl, you wanna focus on attraction and comfort. You want your personality to be a blend of both people. Now, the perfect guy for any girl if you wanna get in a relationship would be a guy who's both a provider and a player. You want a guy who's both a provider and a player. You wanna express both these personalities so the girl thinks that you are the perfect guy. She thinks that she could not possibly get any better because who's a fucking player and who's like also a provider? Basically a guy who can get any girl he wants, but he, for whatever reason, settles for you. And he tells you, I love you, baby. And this is the girl that every guy wants, the perfect guy. Now, a lot of you guys, if you guys are missing out on this, let's say this is the fundamental you have an issue with. Now, there's two different characters that have an issue with this fundamental specifically. All right, so one is Butter Knife. I am naturally a Butter Knife. A Butter Knife type person is somebody who's very empathetic, understanding, and can see people's expressions a lot better and can tell when he's being awkward and people don't like him. So this kind of character goes into situations like, I hope I don't make the girl feel uncomfortable. That kind of guy has a problem with attraction. That guy's afraid of pushing the envelope and being maybe a little bit edgy. Now, the other type of guy is, does not have an issue with being edgy. This guy's a lot rarer. <laughs> I have a lot of friends who are currently this guy, and if you are this person, to be honest, you have a lot smaller jump to be really good at game than somebody who's a butter knife. A butter knife has to push past a lot of his insecurities and become more confident. You, on the other hand, don't have this problem. You are a bulldozer. Bulldozer type people are people who do not have an issue with making people feel uncomfortable. The problem is though, is that you are not reading social cues, you have a problem reading social cues, so you don't understand rejection, you don't understand why you're getting rejected, and you don't know how to build comfort with a girl. Comfort is built through like a lot of different things, which we're gonna get into in a second. Um, if you guys are either one of these people, you wanna play the pendulum and play to your weakness. So if you're, if you're a butter knife, for example, you wanna play 
to be more attractive. You want to focus solely on being attractive for a while. Now, if you're a bulldozer and you're having this issue, you want to focus on being empathetic and comfortable for a while. All right, this is going to be your goal if you're either of these people to fix this fundamental. Now, what we're going to get into is ways to demonstrate attraction and ways to demonstrate comfort. Now, we're going to start with attraction first because generally speaking, when you guys get really good or you get to a high, intermediate, or advanced level, generally speaking, you always want to lead with attraction. It's a lot easier to lead with attraction and fall back on comfort if you need it than the other way around. If you approach girl and you're being very comfortable and then all of a sudden you're like, no, no, baby, I'm a badass. Understand, I'm a badass after you were like, you know, oh, I think you're really cute and I want to talk to you. Like after you say that you're losing out on like the, <laughs> you're losing out. You can't like, you can't backtrack from that. Cause now it looks like you're being try hard, but if you're going to, you're approaching really attractive and you approach really strongly and then you're like, then you drop back to comfort. You're leading with more value. And because you have to let, let, because you led with the value, now you can drop back to the comfort. So with that being said, we're going to start with attraction. All right. So what displays attraction? What are ways to show a girl you're an attractive person? Now an attractive person is somebody that is a very alpha dominant person who has girls constantly being thrown at him. Now, opposed to what a lot of people conf, like, <laughs> opposed to what people commonly think, being an alpha kind of guy is not somebody who is constantly beating down everybody, is stressing everybody out. Uh, it's not somebody who is constantly feeling the need to puff their chest out, show how fucking out, like the, the general term of alpha is totally off base and it's not tr based in reality. I feel, I think it's kind of just a caricature of itself. So pretty much anything that you're going to do, that's going to display attraction. It's going to demonstrate that you're a leader of men, that women like you, that you're a confident person that you assume is going to go well. It's essentially just sh uh, showing that you're a person of abundance. Anything in attraction is just demonstrating abundance. All right. One way to show abundance is an IOD indicator of disinterest. So let's say I'm talking to a girl and let's say I want to do a nonverbal IOD. I'm talking to a girl. She's a 10 out of 10. I know she has a hard time with like maybe being attracted to guys. Let's say though, she has a mole. Let's say she has a mole like right here. I'm going to be talking to her and I'll be like, oh yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Basically I'm looking at the mole the entire time. She's like, what's he looking at? Oh fuck. He's looking at my mole. And now she's going to get self-conscious about it, get in her head about it. Now another way to do it would be like, she's talking to you and let's, let's actually try a Todd line. You know, she's like trying to like, let's say she's trying to impress you. Let's say she's qualifying herself, which a 10 out of 10 young girl would oftentimes do. She'd do that with anybody. It's not necessarily a sign that she likes you. She's just trying to, you know, make herself feel better and prove to the outside world she's a cool person. Um, she'll, she'll say something like, oh yeah, I know I'm here. My Instagram has, you know, 12,000 followers or something like that. Oh my God. And this guy over here is trying to buy me dinner. And I was just like, no, I don't want it. I don't feel it. Now, then you're like, oh yeah, that's cool. It's whatever. And you look off and you're like starting to act like you're distracted, you're like whatever. Like most guys, when she's doing this, they're like, oh yeah, that's so interesting. Oh yeah. You're doing an IOD. You're like, it, like showing disinterest. Like, like rolling your eyes. Maybe, maybe she does something. You roll your eyes. Like it's, it's an indicator of disinterest. Okay. Now another way to do it. This is more of a general uh, mind state is apathy. All right. Now there's empathy. There's apathy. Now apathy is naturally attractive to a, a very hot girl, a girl that's used to like fucking guys fawning over apathy, not caring about her is like very attractive. If you don't care if she rejects you, if you don't care if she's like, um, if she likes you, if you're being very edgy, like let's say like a, like a Jeffy type person, you're being very edgy. Like it's showing that you're very apathetic about what she thinks about you. You're being yourself. That's attractive to a 10 out of 10 type of girl. Now this one honestly goes into both. This one is both attraction and comfort. And this one is eye contact. All right. So when you're talking to a girl, you approach her, giving her eye contact is a dominant trait shows you're not intimidated by her. And having like a relaxed face as well. So like, if I'm looking at her, I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Like, that's nice. Yeah, cool. It's like, I'm giving her eye contact and because I'm giving her eye contact, it shows that I'm not intimidated. Eye contact, very attractive. Other ways to demonstrate this are confidence and tonality. So like you hear me talking right now, I'm breaking rapport as I'm talking to the camera. My tone goes down as opposed to like, Hey, how's it going? How's it going guys? Your day going good? Oh my God. That's so interesting. It's going, Hey, how's it going? Wow. So interesting. It's like, it's breaking down at the end. This is an also an attractive thing. It's a, it's a break and rapport. It shows that I don't care. These are a couple hot buttons that are actually old mystery method, but are still so fucking true to this day. Pre-selection is one of the hot buttons. Now pre-selection, if girls are fawning over you, if girls like you and she can see that girls are visually like talking to you, that's super attractive. Now, a lot of times I'll even be like, just like super fucking nice when I'm warming up with girls in the club. Um, cause I know other girls around those girls are going to see that the girls are talking to me really like happily and whatnot. And they're just going to naturally assume that either one, I'm friends with them or two, I'm flirting with them and it's going well. So I have pre-selection. So when I approach them, I'm already naturally more attractive. Now, another way to, uh, also hit another hot button would be leader of men. Now, when I go to a club, I talk to men too. I talk to guys. I make friends. I make alliances with guys. 
And this is not a bad thing. What this does is later on, like let's say I'm talking to a girl and I've made such good friends with those guys, I can bring them back and the guy's gonna be like, oh my God, it's you again, high five. Cause they're gonna be wasted drunk by this point. They're gonna be happy to see me. And she's gonna be like, who the fuck is this guy? It's one thing to be an attractive person, but it's another to be congruent to his character. Now, if you get to a high intermediate or advanced level, congruence to the character that you're playing off is very important. Now, if you guys are like more beginner, low intermediate, intermediate, like you guys are probably rushing sets because the longer you're with a girl, the longer time you have to show that you're incongruent to the character you're putting forth. Now, if you're congruent to the character you're putting forth, time and set will actually build attraction. It also builds comfort too, but time and set, if you're an attractive dude who's cool, will actually build attraction as well. Self-amusement. Self-amusement is very attractive. Now, it has to come from the self. It has to make yourself laugh. It can't be for her. If you're saying something, make sure that it makes you legitimately laugh and puts you in a good character, a good mood. If you're doing this for yourself, the girl's going to sense it. She's also going to see that you're laughing. It's going to be contagious. The girl's going to laugh with you. And then you guys have this kind of like this thing you're working towards. You guys are both kind of like, Basically, it's like her vibing with you. You're laughing, she's laughing, also puts her in a better mood, makes her more likely to do crazy shit, and it shows how free you are as a person, how free you are to make jokes, because only alpha guys honestly make jokes. You have to be out of your head to really be really good at joking. Like, if you guys have a problem, like a problem with making jokes or being self-amused, a lot of times it comes from you just being out of state so long. Like, being out of state and being out of it is generally more of a beta thing and showing that you're self-amusing and you could be free and use those emotions is a very alpha thing. From this point, we're gonna go into comfort. Comfort for a lot of you guys will be easier. For some of you guys, it might be a little bit harder. All right, comfort honestly is empathy. It's caring about the person. It's showing that, you, that you're attracted to her. It's IOIs. So, all right, let's get into the first one, IOIs. Indicator of interest. So if you wanna build like uh, comfort with a girl and you sense that she doesn't necessarily maybe know that you're into her and you sense that you need comfort, do an indicator of interest. Be like, okay, look, just cut the chase. I think you're cute, all right? I think you're, you know, my 10 out of 10, I think you're adorable. You can honestly push this a little bit. Like, if you don't say 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10 would be like sometimes pushing it too much. Unless the girl's totally like, you know, getting a little bit upset, then do a 10 out of 10 line. But you can be like, yeah, well, obviously the way I'm, reason I'm talking is because I think you're attractive. Like, why else? Like, in that case, like, the girl's like, oh, he likes me. Okay, cool. All right, I guess he's not teasing me. He's being honest with me. Like, he's not trying to just like, I'm not like, num like, Girl 101, like he actually legitimately likes me as a person. And now when you do an IOI, make sure it's unique, make sure it's actually honest, because that will come across in the subtext. As I said before, time spent. Time spent with a girl will help you out with getting her more comfortable. If she's around you longer, girls don't want to fuck you unless they know who you are, which is why you know some pickup artists, and I totally agree with this, say that the top pickup artists in the world do a great job of just spitting who they are on the girl, just like vomiting who they are on them. Like, I'm very good at this. I know a lot of people out there who are really good at this. Like, it's like turning your personality up to a 10. And because you did that, you're just like, Bleh! like all on the girl. And the girl's like, oh shit, now I wanna fuck him in like half an hour instead of like the usual eight hours or like three dates or whatever. This comes back to another point. Look at the girl in her face. This is empathy. You wanna see what she's into. So like, she looks past you, you're like, oh, she needs to go somewhere. She's walking fast. Let her know that she, you know, she's in a rush. Um, she has friends there. Hey guys, sorry. I'm not trying to leave you out of this. Uh, well, all right, really quick. Um, I just want to say, is she like, <laughs> is she kind of a little bit weird? She's going to cut my kidneys out. Uh, do I need to like back out slowly? Let me know. Like it's you and me <laughs> and that pulls the girl in, helps her out. Um, it kind of like slows down the interaction, makes the friends laugh a little bit. And if a girl will see that her friends are laughing, they like you, you're part of her social circle. Now you're now comfortable. You're now somebody that she would generally sleep with. Another one would be just getting to know in questions. So this is coming back to like her getting to know you. You ask her questions, get to know her, and you're actually really listening to her when she's saying these things. That's another thing. Most guys, you guys are all in your head hearing white noise like, oh no, what do I say to make her like me? What do I say to make her like me? Actually just being in a moment with the girl and understanding, listening, and being empathetic and wanting to get to know her. So like, what do you do for a living? She's like, oh, I'm a nurse. Ah, oh, that's cute. So you're like a motherly type? Oh, okay, I get that. Like, see, I'm like, I'm actually like, I'm actually getting to know her. And because she said that, cause she's actually giving me stuff to get, um, she's giving me like information about herself. I reward her for it. And she's gonna be more likely to do that in the future. And it builds a lot of comfort with her cause I'm empathetic. She knows that I wanna fucking like kill her cause I care about her. Like I care about her as a person. Um, why, why would I feel the need to hurt her? Like she's like, like I'm not somebody who's gonna go to my friends and be like, I fucked you. I'm not somebody who's gonna like, basically make her feel bad about herself. I'm not gonna fucking rape her if she gets alone with me. She knows that I'm a good person and that I care about her. Again, 
As you guys get better, you guys want to learn how to play these. You guys want to get these in maximum. You guys want to get comfort and attraction, which a lot of these stuff are actually like, like congruence and eye contact, storytelling even. All these things show both comfort and attraction at the same time. You guys always want to be playing this, um, but if you guys are early, intermediate, uh, more beginner, you guys want to learn how to. You guys will want to lean on your weakness for a while. Play the pendulum, play to your weakness. If it's attraction, play attraction. Focus on it for like three months. If it's like comfort, focus on it for a while, okay? Until you guys get it knocked out. Now, it can take you guys a long time to kind of get the calibration right for this. Uh, it took me a while. I remember the first time that I ever pushed attraction too hard, and I remember the look in the girl's eyes where she felt... All right, so I was practicing my attraction like game, my pushing, and I remember in my head I was thinking, I'm not an attractive person, so I really need to overcompensate and do a lot of attraction. So I started doing a lot of attraction. I started pushing, pushing, pushing. I remember I did this to this girl. I did like two pushes, and then my final push was, um, I think you're cute, but I'm still trying to get to know you. Like, see if you're like one of those kind of people that I'd really like get into. And it was like, not even, it was such a subtle push, but it was enough for her to like, like get to the point to where she's like, she got really pissed at me. And I remember I saw it, and I'm like, okay, so that's what happens when I push attraction too hard. And that was when it clicked in my head that I also need comfort. I mean, there's other things like getting arrested and stuff that helped out with that a lot. But um, yeah, it's gonna come to a point where you guys are gonna get those little like, those little like points where you're gonna be like, oh, that's attraction, oh, that's this, oh, that's that, oh, that's this. And because you're pushing your opposite a lot, you're gonna start kind of seeing it. You're gonna see when the girl tenses up her shoulders, like you hammers, you're gonna see when she tenses up her shoulders, uh, she does a smile, but she's like this. Like, instead of like doing it with her eyes, she's doing it with her mouth, like, yeah, okay, cool. Like she's doing that kind of look. It's, you're gonna see that she's uncomfortable. You're gonna see she's crossing her arms and she's like this. Like, you want to eventually get her relaxed, or like, here's another one actually. You see somebody doing this, they're not in the conversation. Ask her a question about her. Ask her about something that she finds value. So ask her about her. You want to build a, you want to build more comfort if this is the case. Well, to be honest, this can also be like, because of a, you're not an attraction. All right, so I guess this one's, <laughs> now if you see a girl doing this, this one's like a lot more uh, subtle. A lot of times this can be like, if the girl's into you, like she might just feel in her head because she's into you so much or she's in her. So basically whenever you see somebody doing this, they're putting forth a character in front of you that they don't, that they're not actually feeling congruent to. So a lot of times when somebody's doing this, it's because they're either, they're either not listening to you. Um, they're thinking about leaving. Uh, they're not actually feeling comfortable in the situation. So in this case, you still need to do a lot of work, slow down your conversation and start feeling it out, figure out which one you need. Now, I'm gonna give you guys some cool tactics and lines from this point on around uh, push-pull that can help you guys out. So, um, one of my favorite strategies is my sandwich. I've been using this since like probably year two, and I figured this out by accident one day when I was gaming like out back in Sacramento. Um, so I approached a girl, and I remember she was super attractive, like at the time, out of my league. Um, like, so I approach her, and she's like, well here, I'm gonna go back to the club, you can either stay here, or..." go with me and I couldn't go back in the club because I didn't have a stamp. So I'm like this. I'm like, well, hey, I totally get it. If you wanna, like, so this is what I said. Um, I totally understand, if you wanna go, you can go. Not a big deal. Um, I do think you're attractive, but if you have to leave, go for it. Now see, what I did was a push-pull push. Now the girl's very attractive, so I put it more in the direction of push. It makes it seem like I don't care, but also says that I would still like to talk to her. I still wanna talk to you, but if you gotta go, I don't care. Now, with a very attractive girl, this will make her stay. Now, on the other side of things, let's say you're saying this to a girlfriend, somebody who's already invested in you. Now, in this case, you wanna do what's called a push-pull push. This is a different kind of sandwich. Now, with this, what you wanna do is, you wanna say like, baby, I love you. Okay, I get it, if you gotta go, do it, but I want you to stay. Now, because I'm saying it this way, do you see how it's more pull? I want you to stay. I, if you need to, I get it, I'm not trying to like hold you down, I'm not trying to cage you, but I want you to be with me, babe. Now, see, that's more when, you, like, when you're in a relationship and you're trying to get the girl to stay. Let's say you really pissed her off. Now, from this point on, I'm probably going to go through some more of my more canned lines that are kind of based around attraction and uh, comfort just to give you guys an idea of ways to use this. So here. At some point, I, like, I had like a client pay me money to write out my 100 top used lines. And they're, by this point, they're, most of them are outdated. I don't use most of them anymore because I come up with new lines I like better. So I really don't mind using... They use too much in sharing them as much. Um, so like, let's do some uh, self amusement lines. So let's see, is that the top one? Yep. <laughs> so if you guys wanna, <laughs> this is a really bad one I used to use. So <laughs> when I used to drag, so if I'm going through like a really crowded spot, I'm really in the zone, I'm dragging a girl behind me, I'm like, 
peasants, look at them, peasants. Let's go, peasants. Move, bow. I'd be like, they should be bowing. Like I'll be walking around with her and what this is doing is make it very like out there. It's very like showing that I'm free and it's showing her that I'm very unstifled. It's a very attractive thing to do. If you're doing this around like a model, she's gonna be laughing, confine. It's perfect for you like in one of those situations. Now let's go to another more comfort building one. Actually, I like this one. This is one of my favorite ones that uh, Julian does. So if a girl's like qualifying herself to you, let's say that she's like, she's trying to tell you about like, let's say you baited her into qualifying. Let's say like, you know, um, you're not acting all that interest about something. Then she's like, oh no, well, I'm just saying it for this reason and this. I'm like, baby, baby, look, don't try so hard. I already like you. So if you're pushing, 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 it's kind of like a subtle pull, but it's also a push as well. It's, it's a very clean line and it's perfect for like those situations if you want to get her really hooked into you. Now this one is a subtle pull. Um, so this one is, sorry, honestly, you're not my type. I generally date like Quasimodo's like, you know, hunchback bitches with the wigs and stuff like that, like long hair. That's kind of my, more my type, which also would like elicit a laugh too. So it's also attractive at the same time. Now this one is a full, this one's a conversation topic. This one's a full comfort. So when I'm well, kind of, it also shows that I'm socially apt, which being a social human being is also attractive because it shows that you're not stifled and shows that generally speaking, you probably talk to a lot of girls. Um, but here it is. This one's mainly a comfort line. So when you say this, um, yeah, I don't know. Honestly, I feel bad for you women. Like whenever I look at women nowadays, like for the most part, like 99% of guys are these giant hairy beasts that if they're crazy and you start dating them, that one, you don't want to see them fucking naked. Like, you know, guy looks good naked Two, Like if the guy was crazy and he wanted to kill you, like, like you, there's nothing to save you. Like, you know, the guy's like fucking nuts. But on the other hand, if like I, on the other hand, talk to you and you're crazy, like pretty much all I have to do is like palm you. You're like swinging your knife at me and stuff. I'm okay. I'll survive. Just a little flight information coming up on the left. Hey, We're going to be face. catching a glimpse of the Shut Grand the Canyon fuck on up. the right. <laughs> We're flying at an altitude of 37,000 feet, and our airspeed is 400 miles an hour. 99% of all women are attractive. Like, if you were to ask me, like, would you like to see her naked? I'd be like, yeah, yep, definitely, yeah, 100%. <laughs> So that's my uh, comfort building line. And make sure to follow my Instagram, my Facebook. Uh, links are in the description below. And with that being said, you already know you a dead out. man. This is God's plan. Someone stop me. I've been sent here from Illuminati. Evil scriptures written on my body. Me and Satan pull up in a red Ferrari. Don't be trying to put your fucking arm around me. 44 shots traumatized in front of 45. Hit 44 more carbon copies. Then you kamikaze. That's for everybody. Mama, poppy. Sister, brother, cousin, uncle, auntie. This is not Versace. This is Hahabachi. This is Harry 